Titanium has been considered the main metal component of dental implants for decades, but do you know that in certain patients it may create invisible complications? Today I'm going to show you from a clinical and scientific perspective which are those hidden risks and what options we have to prevent them. My name is Dr. Fernando Verdugo. I am an American board certified periodontist since 2003, clinician, researcher and published author. I am also a guest speaker and visiting professor at several universities. And I want to share with you the scientific truth about dental implants beyond what most people know. And why titanium? Titanium is often referred as a chemically inert metal, but it would be more accurate to say that it exhibits a high resistance to uh, corrosion. Titanium is the uh, element number 22 of the periodic table and is located in group and period four as a uh, transition metal known for its high strength to weight ratio and a uh, strong resistance to uh, corrosion. Titanium is known for its biocompatibility, durability, and ability to integrate with bone, that is uh, osseointegration, with high clinical success. Titanium is a reactive metal, so when in contact with air or water, it forms spontaneously an ultra-thin layer of four nanometers. This four nanometers thick layer protects the uh, metal. And this is actually a very good thing. This uh, natural oxide layer is stable and self-healing. It uh, acts as a barrier to uh, protect the metal from further corrosion. In biological environments, it's uh, physiologically inert because it doesn't react with body tissue and fluids, making it suitable for medical implants and prosthetics. But like any other metal, uh, it is not perfect. These are some of the scientifically shown uh, hidden risks. Number one, potential release of metal particles. This can happen as a result of a loosening of the implant abandon connection, which can take place during uh, mastication in modern two-piece implant systems. The presence of microgaps, biofilms, and oral fluids at the uh, implant abutment connection can cause mechanical and biological complications. The uh, byproducts of uh, oral bacteria metabolism, and uh, together with acidic foods, can decrease the uh, local pH environment, favoring metal corrosion. Furthermore, the uh, mechanical micro movements that occur at the uh, contacting surfaces of the uh, modern two-piece implant systems can increase the wear of the uh, inner surfaces. Also, oral biofilms can amplify the uh, corrosion of uh, these implant surfaces. If for whatever reason that uh, ultra-thin oxide implant layer is damaged, it may increase as well the uh, phenomenon of galvanic forces between two different metals, leading to a further release of metal particles. Number two, uh, inflammation and uh, potential pre-implantitis. The uh, mechanical wear and bio-corrosion could possibly act synergistically, increasing the uh, release of nanoparticles into the uh, surrounding pre-implant tissues. This could potentially uh, stimulate pre-implant inflammation, leading to a uh, bone resorption or what we see as crystal bone loss. Number three, uh, aesthetics. This release of metal particles can produce pigmented lesions around the uh, sub-tissues of the implant, that is a discoloration. This would happen as a result of the uh, processes of uh, mechanical wear and biological corrosion or biocorrosion. Also, if the uh, pre-implant mucosa is uh, thin, we may see a darkening or a metal transparency. If the implant happens to have a uh, bone loss and or uh, has been placed too shallow, this metal transparency may be uh, more obvious. We do want to have certain uh, soft tissue thickness around that implant to prevent this and also have an implant that has been placed at the uh, right depth. If the implant site needed bone augmentation prior to implant placement and it was not properly done, then we may see this anesthetic darkening. We want to have a crystal bone thickness of about two millimeters, definitely no less than one, and a soft tissue thickness of about two as well. For 
titanium allergy. Even though titanium allergy is rare, we may find some patients that present titanium allergy. The estimated prevalence is relatively low, about 0.6%. In these cases, allergy tests could be recommended. A research team from the University of Oviedo studied 1,500 consecutive patients and saw an estimated prevalence of about 0.6%. These uh, allergies can provoke the uh, so-called hypersensitivity reactions type 1 and 4, leading to a uh, potential implant failure. Future vision and preventive measures. Titanium is still considered a safe material for successful clinical outcome due to its biocompatibility an ability to integrate with patient's naked bone, that is, os integration. Titanium tattooing has also been associated to zirconia. If we see a pigmentation of the uh, mucosa surrounding the implant, we should always do a uh, differential diagnosis with the following three. Number one, oral melanotic macula, which is a benign lesion. Number two, metal tattooing, which is also a benign lesion. Number three, melanoma. This is a malignant lesion. Even though melanomas are not common in the oral cavity, about 0.4 to 1.8% of all melanomas can occur in the oral cavity. So always take a biopsy if a dark pigmented area shows around the pre-implant soft tissues. Uh, these are three of the possible solutions for to prevent biocorrosion and mechanical wear. The more bacterial biofilm forms around the uh, implant, the uh, greater chances of having an acidic environment around the uh, mucosa of that implant, which could lead to uh, corrosion. Therefore, good oral hygiene is mandatory to prevent and avoid such acidic environments. So good oral hygiene can reduce the uh, formation of oral biofilms, oral bacterial biofilms, and acid release. Number two, a proper implant crown fit. So we always want to avoid a misfit between the implant crown on the implant platform. High quality reputable implant systems and implant abutment parts can reduce the chances of a misfit and micro gap formation. A good dental lab must use high quality implant parts and high quality milling devices. Number three, treatment planning. When we do proper treatment planning to decide on the need of bone augmentation prior to implant placement, we can prevent thin areas where the metal transparency can lead to anesthetic clinical outcomes. It's better before than after. And correct implant 3D positioning to prevent anesthetic outcomes as well is key. So we don't want an implant that is too shallow, we don't want an implant that is too buccal. That could also create anesthetic areas where the metal is showing. My experience tells me that high quality titanium alloy implants are safe in implant dentistry. And the success of an implant does not depend only on the material used, but on the uh, correct diagnosis and treatment planning tailored to its specific individual needs and specific individual biology. Titanium has been a great highlight in implant dentistry for decades, but we must continue exploring other natural and biocompatible methods and materials to improve clinical outcomes. If you want to know more about periostal guided bone regeneration in implant dentistry and new alternatives in modern implant dentistry, I invite you to uh, subscribe and follow me on my YouTube channel. This is a case published by my research team from the uh, University of Basque Country, led by uh, Program Director Professor Rivery, depicting a metal pigmentation on the side that had an implant placed a few months prior. The patient developed a pigmented lesion darkening of the uh, perimplant mucosa several months after the implant crown had been delivered. It is important to be vigilant and and take action when these uh, pigmented lesions appear around implant sites. Even though the uh, chances of these pigmented areas are likely to be uh, metal tattoos, some reports have shown that malignancies could be associated with these dark lesions. Research has shown that there is an association between biocorrosion, the uh, presence of uh, titanium uh, particles, and implant biological complications. However, there is not enough scientific evidence to show uh, causality between the presence of these metal titanium particles 
and biological complications. So just because there is a biocorrosion doesn't mean that that implant will fail. However, we should minimize these risks by providing a good fit between the implant crown and the implant platform, between the two-piece implant system, the crown and the implant, to minimize that mechanical wear and the biocorrosion 